come before us is State of Ohio v. Kyle Mellinger. Each party will have 15 minutes to present their arguments. The appellant may reserve up to five minutes for rebuttal. If you do plan to reserve time, please let me know as I'll be keeping track of time. Would you like to reserve time? Yes, sir. And how much? Five minutes? Mm -hmm. And the arguments are being recorded, so please stay behind the podium and keep your voices up. Uh, you should not use the names of children or minors or victims, um, should that be applicable. And you can refer to them by initials or terms like the child. The judges have read your briefs and are ready to proceed when you are. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honors. I'm Susan Minofsky from the Summit Legal Defender's Office, and I represent the appellant in this case, Kyle Mallinger. This is an OVI case. The question is reasonable, articulable suspicion for the stop. The dash cam that was reviewed by the trial court has been admitted in evidence for your review. There were also two other exhibits at the trial court, and those were still shots that the trooper prepared for purposes of a suppression hearing. Um, I'm certainly not going to tell the court how to look at a video or look at, at pictures, and I really think that this case is going to boil down to your interpretation of the evidence. However, the trial court made an evidentiary finding. So the fact that the trial court made has not been challenged by either party. And that fact is that the tires of Mr. Mel the tire of Mr. Mellinger's car was on the double yellow line. The significance is the trial court did not find that the tire had crossed the double yellow line. And that's what brings us here today. So the court needs to be oh, you, you, yes. were, you referenced that. That was, I recall, an oral statement by the judge at the hearing and not in a written uh, order regarding the motion surprise. Do you think that oral statement at the hearing has the same weight as a written finding in a decision? I do. Because that's what the finding was based upon. And there's been no challenge to that, Your Honor. And it is consistent with the evidence. So in order for this court to make some other factual finding, the court would have to go outside the record and outside of the evidence. So you believe the evidence shows that his tire did hit the yellow line? Yes. Not over. Correct. Okay. The tire was clearly on the yellow line. Does the revised code prohibit a tire touching a double yellow line? No, it does not. In fact, the revised code does not even prohibit a car going over the double yellow line. It just has to be done cautiously. So the cases that have been addressed on this already look at a couple of different things. What are the circumstances? Well, in this particular case, if you watch the body cam and you have the audio on, you'll hear this is a bumpy road. The trooper's cruiser is hitting potholes, just like the car in front of him. That's a consideration. The other thing that you can consider is the technicality of the law. So the, the law is based upon safety. And the only reason you cannot cross a line is if it's not safe. In this case, there was no safety consideration. There wasn't any argued at the trial court and there's nothing visible in the evidence presented to you. There's no oncoming traffic. In fact, there are good reasons for a car to move from the dead center of the lane while traveling. The law doesn't require that vehicles maintain the centermost position of the lanes. The laws are there to keep safety and keep the flow of traffic. What is not safe is for someone to slam on the brakes every time they see a pothole or something in front of them. That's not what we are trained to do. We're trained to use reasonable judgment and act safely. And that's why there's no case law saying that when a tire touches the yellow line or lines, that that's a violation. I think the state argued that our case is state for us. Coon or Coon all actually does say that if you hit the yellow line as opposed to the white line, the yellow line, that is a per se violation. 
The state did argue that with respect to the Coon case, which is out of this court, but in that case, the facts are different. In that case, the court found that the tire had gone over both lines. That is not what the argument is here. And in that case, there is no analysis of the safety issue or lack of there being a safety issue like there is here. For instance, at the trial court, the, there was no evidence or argument that it was impractical for this car to move or the reverse of that. Is it impractical for this car to move from dead center in the lane? So the Coon case is different. That was two lines that the car had crossed over, both of those. With respect, I don't think that that particular case is the best case in, in these um, situations. And in Coon, there were other traffic violations that the trial court found. So there was more than one thing that provided reasonable articulable suspicion. Other than the nature of the road being somewhat bumpy, is there any other safety concern that caused the appellant to be going on to the yellow line? Well, as the court can see in the video, it's raining, it's dark, um, there's glare, and this was testified to at the, at the trial court by the officer on cross-examination. In one of the images that was presented to the trial court, there is no line at all for some period of time, and then the double yellow line and then a car. So there are parts of the roadway where the line's missing. When you say a car, and I have not looked at the, the video camera, I apologize, but is that, was there another car on the road other than the officer and the appellant? Is there no. a third car? Okay, so there's yeah. these two, all the during car. this time, there's just these two vehicles that we're walking, we're observing. Right, so the car in the image that I'm referring to is the appellant's car. And we need to see no debris on the road, no animal running in front of him, nothing like that at any point in time to cause him to. I don't recall seeing anything like that, but what you will observe in the video is the loud noise of the cruiser every time it hits a bump or something in the car. So the other thing that um, the court should consider with the double yellow line is the fact that there are two lines is just heightened safety consideration. So that informs the motorist, really be careful because there's oncoming traffic, not just traffic behind you. But it does not signify the end of the lane. So it's not as if, for instance, I'm gonna go this way, two, lines in the center of the road, those are the two yellow lines on the driver's left, the closest one is not saying that's the end of your lane. That's not what that signifies. And in fact, in the Coon case, what the court noted was not that the driver had touched or, or been on that yellow line, but that the driver in Coon had gone past the second yellow line which they refer to as the left. So if you're the driver, the right yellow line is closest to you, the left yellow line is furthest from you. And that was what the court in Coon noted with that driver. They had gone over the left line. That's not the finding by the trial court here. The trial judge found that Kyle Mellinger touched the yellow line, never found that he crossed over them and went into the oncoming lane. And arguably, even if he had, that alone is not a violation of the revised code section. It has to be where it's not safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. You will have uh, the full five minutes for rebuttal. Thank you, Your Good 
morning, Your Honors. Kirsten Smith, Bradley State of Ohio. Um, I think it's important to remember in this case, the issue is not whether Mr. Mellinger is guilty of committing a marked lane violation. The issue is whether Trooper Knowles had reasonable articulable suspicion to initiate a traffic stop based on his observations of Mr. Mellinger committing two left of center violations. Mr. Mellinger relies primarily on the recent Ohio Supreme Court case, State v. Turner, um, in its briefing. Um, the Turner case, that was an extremely limited holding. The court held that the solid white fog line that's on the right of the roadway marks the edge of the roadway, and driving onto that line is not enough for reasonable suspicion to initiate a traffic stop. In its analysis, the court primarily looked to the Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices um, to look at definitions of these roadway markings. Um, when we look to the manual, section 3A.06B, um, it states a solid longitudinal line merely discourages or prohibits crossing. A double yellow line, however, is defined by the manual and states that a double line indicates maximum or special restrictions. Um, in this case, it was a double yellow line, so there was traffic coming in the other directions, and Trooper Knowles testified and um, introduced both the exhibits stating, showing and stating that the car did travel onto that line, which is, is consistent with the court's findings. Do you agree that in this case, there's no evidence that shows the car traveled over the yellow line, just touched the yellow line? Uh, based on the images and testimony in the court's findings, yes, in the videos, we do. Um, the, um, Mr. Mellinger also points to State v. Coon, um, stating that the court found that the driver in that case did cross and drive over the yellow line. However, paragraph 12 of that decision discusses that, yes, there were two traffic violations in this case, one of which was the driver in that case driving his tires onto the double yellow line. Um, and the court stated that that alone was enough for reasonable suspicion in that case. Um, Do you believe driving on the yellow line is enough for reasonable suspicion or is that act of a violation of 45, 11, 19, whatever? I believe it's enough for reasonable suspicion um, The other, and arguably it, to be found guilty of a marked lane violation. Um, Mr. Mellinger points to a number of things like the potholes. Um, it was dark, it was three in the morning, things like that. However, this court has held in state the roots them, that those are questions for a jury to consider, um, not questions to consider when determining whether there is reasonable suspicion to initiate a traffic stop. Um, so if there are no further questions. Um, is it just your view the nature of the double yellow line distinguishes this from Turner? Because Turner clearly said if you just touch the fog line, that was not a violation. Correct. Um, and it's further um, indicative that the court did not consider the double yellow line as decision um, because this was a conflict case from, I believe, the 12th district. Um, the court found only the cases dealing with the fog line to be in conflict and declined to consider cases addressing yellow and other roadway markings to be in conflict there. Um, and even if this court does, does determine that driving onto a WL line is not reasonable suspicion, based on the law known to Trooper Knowles and based on the facts that he observed, um, that was a reasonable mistake of law, which this court, um, again in Roopsum, has held that you can still have reasonable articulate suspicion, even if your basis is a mistake of law, like in this case. So given the Turner, Turner's limited holding, and the actual definitions of these roadway markings, there is a distinguishment here between something that marks the edge of the roadway and something that indicates maximum restrictions. What so, are things that recognize a maximum restriction? That tends to be the, the line where traffic's coming the other way, correct? What else does the code indicate is a maximum restriction line? Um, the, the double um, solid line is the maximum restriction. Um, the code also states um, a broken line indicates permissive conditions. You know, if I'm driving down the road and I have a broken line, I can pass if it's safe to do so. Um, and if there's a broken yellow line on my right side, there's another lane that I can move 
safely in and out of however government yellow line it is a maximum restriction you can't pass um, there's traffic coming in the opposite direction it's just not the same as a fog line which is merely the edge of a roadway so you'd be asking that our holding would be limited to a situation where a tire was on the double yellow line is that fair correct correct i mean there are situations with you know a hash mark and a solid line where that's not as restrictive and the there's practical as well as well as the legal definitions of those for those restrictions existing. Um, so is, there, is there a distinction between uh, which line it is the, of the w, double yellow lines? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, okay. Is, does it matter if it's the left yellow line or the right yellow line? Um, I, well, a yellow line always indicates traffic flowing in opposite directions. Sure. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen your double white line. <laughs> no, I, I'm asking you, I'm asking you, I believe that opposing um, the, the uh, appellant is, has made some distinction between whether the tire hits the line that is closest to the driver of the car that is traveling in one direction or the other part of that double yellow line, okay. the other line. Okay, I apologize for the confusion. Sure. Um, the pictures show Mr. Mellinger operating on both of those lines. I believe in one of the pictures, I can't recall which exhibit number that is. So I don't think that would be an issue here, whether it was one yellow line or both yellow lines. That being said, I think any time your tires drift onto that line, you're committing a marked lanes violation, or at least reasonable suspicion to believe a violation has occurred. Thank you. Um, so if there are no further questions, I would ask this court to overrule Mr. Mellinger's assignment of error and affirm the decision of the trial court. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor. Counsel. So in terms of reasonable suspicion, it is reasonable suspicion based upon the actual law, not what we think the officer's interpretation might be. And in this case, the law 4511.33 simply says, if a road, roadway's been divided into two or more clearly marked lanes, which this roadway was, a vehicle, which is what Mr. Mellinger was operating, shall be driven as nearly as is practicable entirely within a single lane of traffic and shall not be moved from the lane until the driver's first ascertainment can be done safely. There's been no evidence that he didn't do that. The question really is going to boil down to what does Ohio consider the lane to be? And if he went outside of his lane, did he do so safely? So your, your first inquiry is the double yellow line. If he's on it, he's within his lane. You would have to find that the right line, the double yellow line, is what signifies his lane, and it does not, in order for you to find he went outside of it. So the second inquiry probably should not even be addressed. If you were to find that the right side of the double yellow line was his lane marking, well, what did he do that was unsafe? when he went outside of that lane mark. Nothing. Counsel, isn't it a reasonable articulable suspicion the driver is intoxicated versus a reasonable articulable suspicion that he committed a marked lines violation? No. Why? The whole basis of the traffic stop is that he committed a marked lanes violation. Does it matter if a reasonable officer standard is applied as opposed to the subjective reason for the officer pulling the uh, car over? It should always be a reasonable officer standard. So if the officer testified that he pulled him over for a Mark Lane's violation, does it matter? Yes, that means, I, I agree, that's a good question. It does matter. What okay. matters is that had better be what the evidence is. Right, he so. He pulled him over for a Mark Lane's violation. Back to, your, back to your original statement, I believe was, What's on the tape is pretty germane to this finding on what's being argued on appeal, right? It is germane. 
However, I will also say, since the court found facts, and those facts have not been disputed, I think this court will also have to agree with those facts unless you find something clearly erroneous. Well, I think in this case, the state has agreed that he did not go over the double line, that he was on the line. So I don't think that's a question of dispute for it. Good point, Your Honor. That's true. The state did just concede that he was only on the double line. Thank you very much. Thank you both for your presentations. The court will consider your briefs and render a decision in due course.